So we've been doing solving quadratics by factoring for a couple of weeks now, seems like. We've done nothing but factors. So what we're going to look at today is solving quadratics by taking square roots. Because we know that it's called a quadratic. We've talked about this the first week of school. It's called a quadratic when it's highest power is 2, it's highest power is squared. And you can undo a squared by square rooting like multiplication and division undo each other, so it's the same concept. So that's why I got us these two easy warm-up problems up there to figure out, to make sure we can work with some square roots. And that's what we'll do for the first part of the lesson, is work with breaking down square roots, because these two are both perfect squares. But sometimes we'll have a number that's not a perfect square, and we gotta break it down. So we'll work with that, and then we'll look at it in the solving equation. So on these right here, I'm gonna bet that on number one, most of you got it half right. That's half right. Okay? So, because I could say, where'd my marker go? It went away. There it is. I could say seven squared is equal to 49. That's true, so that's good. But I could also say, whoops, that didn't work right where I went. Negative seven squared is equal to 49, right? Because that would mean negative 7 times negative 7, and negative times a negative is a positive. So to get my complete answer with this 7, I would need to know that it can be positive or negative. I would put that fancy little plus minus sign in front of it. Okay? And that's why I chose this problem, so that I could emphasize that with you. I'm not, you know, you didn't get a bad grade on this or anything like that. But when you square root a number, you could, because times itself always turns it positive. Right? Now, number two, you don't get to use that fancy sign. Because number two told you which sign they want you to use. They put the negative out in front, so that means whatever you get here, make it a negative. So this one, you would just say what number times itself equals 144. So you get 12. My marker keeps disappearing. And then they told you they wanted a negative, so you put a negative in front of it. Okay? All right, let me erase those. We'll get rocking and rolling. Hey, have a good weekend. Good. I forget when I wear this gator instead of my bandana that my glasses fog up more. I gotta remember to stop doing. Yeah, you got to remember to breathe it down. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this square root of 80. So I'm going to over there on the right side of my board. I'm going to start making a list of some perfect squares. You wouldn't be a bad idea for you to have a few in your notes. Uh, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and that gets me far enough for this problem, 10 squared is 100. Okay, so I'm looking there for the square root of 80, so that means some number times itself that equals 80, and you see I don't have it. I go straight from 64 to 81, I skipped it. So I know it's somewhere between eight and nine. So it's gonna be eight point blah, 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 if you type it in your calculator. But that's not what we're gonna be looking for. Most of the time our directions are gonna want the exact square root. So that means that our answer is still gonna have a radical in it. We're just gonna break it down, okay? So I've gotta look now, since 80 wasn't on my list, I gotta look now for the biggest one of these that will go evenly into 80. So I'm going to start working backwards. Will 64 go evenly into 80? Okay, and to check that, you're just doing 80 divided by 64. So no, it wasn't a whole number. Will 49 go evenly into 80? No. Will 36 go evenly into 80? Will 25 go evenly into 80? Will 16 go evenly into 80? I believe that one will. Check it. Do 80 divided by 16. See what you get. Okay, so 16 times 5 is the same as 80. So that's how I'm going to start breaking this problem down. 
Now, the, the confusion every year is, well, why did you do 16? Well, I just went through that process with you. I'm looking for perfect squares, and I just started checking every perfect square to find one that went into it evenly. So now, and, and I say things weird. Y'all figured that out already. But I'm, I'm going to play a little wiffle ball game with this now. If it's a perfect square, the square root of it gets to come out and play wiffle ball. If not, it's got to stay in the house and do chores. So I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say 16. That's a perfect square. What's the square root of 16? 4. So a four gets to come out and play wiffle ball. Five, it's not on my list over here. It's not a perfect square. It has to stay in the house and do chores. Okay, then I got one last thing I need to do to that to be done. Because five can't break down because it's not over here on the right side of my list. And the only thing that'll go into it's one. So it's done. What did we learn about on the 49 problem that we need to add? Plus minus, very good, positive or negative. And that's it. Okay, let's put a extension onto it now here. Let's do the square root of six times the square root of 21. All right. So what you're going to do when you have a square root times a square root, we're going to go ahead and multiply those numbers. So we've got to figure out what 6 times 21 is. So is that like 126? Okay, so now we've got to take the square root of 126. Well, I've only went to 100, so let me scroll down and go a little bit farther. Scroller. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. Okay, so we were looking for 126 and it's not there. So what we've got to do now is the same thing we did on the last problem. Start working our way backwards until we find the biggest one that will go evenly into 126. So will 121 go? 126 divided by 121? No. 100? No. 81? No, 64. No, 49. Okay, oh, 36. No, 25, that's an easy no. Um, 16, we're getting close to the bottom. 126 divided by 16? No, 9, 126 divided by 9? Yes, so 126 is the same as 9 times what? 14. 14. <laughs> so now we're to our wiffle ball game. 9 was a perfect square. That was the point and all that. We were looking for a perfect square. So what times itself equals 9? 3. Mm -hmm. So the 3 gets to come out and play wiffle ball. Then 14, that's not on my list over here. It's not a perfect square. And there's not any of those up that will go evenly into it. 9 won't go into 14, 4 won't go into 14, so 14 stays in the house and does the chores. So if you ever get something, after you bring out the one that gets to play wiffle ball, if you ever get something in the house still that's on this list, that means you didn't take out the biggest perfect square and you've got more work to do. So the way I'm trying to get you to do it is start backwards and work up. That way you'll make sure you took the biggest one out. Okay? Good, good, good. Now remember what we're, we're getting some practice right now working with these because we're fixing to solve equations with them. So we're just trying to get our feet wet working with them. Okay, this next one will be kind of easy. Got the square root of 4 over 81. Okay, so purpose in this one is to show you that when you're taking the square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. Now I told you this one was easy because if you still got that list of perfect squares in your notes, both of those numbers are on there, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 81 is 9. Don't forget your plus minus. 
So nobody, everybody gets to play wiffle ball. Nobody's doing chores. Woo, that's how we like it. Okay, one more like that. Square root of seven over the square root of 16, or square root of seven over 16. So just like the previous problem, that means we square root the numerator and the denominator. Okay, seven, is that on the right side of your list? Is seven a perfect square? No. No, is there a perfect square other than one that'll go evenly into it? Can I break it down? No. No, four won't go evenly into it, and that's the only one smaller than it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just gonna stay like it is. Okay, what about the bottom? What about 16? Four, very good, plus minus. Now, here's the rule, and we're gonna see this maybe on the next, yeah, we're gonna see this on the next problem. It's okay, the, these square root symbols, by the way, they're called radicals. If you ever hear me say radical, it's okay to have a radical on the numerator. So you can have a square root sign on the top. You cannot leave a radical on the denominator. You can't leave a square root symbol on the bottom. You gotta get rid of that. It's called rationalize the denominator. That's what we're gonna see now. Doing good, doing good. We're almost ready. Got two more, and then we'll be ready to solve. Come on, page turn. There you go. All right. So we got square root of five over two. All right, so this one's the last two that we had that were fractions. The bottom, the denominator was a perfect square, so the radical canceled itself out. This time we're going to see that not happen, and we got to know how to attack it. So we know this is the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. Now start looking on that right side of the list, and 5 or 2, neither 1 are over there, are they? So we do not have any perfect squares. Well, that last problem, when 7 wasn't a perfect square, we got to just leave it alone but we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So I gotta figure out what I can do to the denominator to make that radical go away. Okay, we know a radical goes away if it's a perfect square. So the next perfect square that I could uh, get to would be four, right? So what would I have to multiply two by two? So I'm gonna multiply this, get a new color here to show what I'm doing. I'm gonna multiply this by the square root of two. Now, whatever you do on the bottom of a fraction, you have, you have to do on the top. So we're gonna multiply top and bottom by the square root of two. Okay, so square root of five times the square root of two, that's the square root of 10. This next step you can skip, but I'm gonna show my work since it's the first time. Square root of two times the square root of two is the square root of four, but then we know what the square root of four is, right? Okay, so what about that 10 on the top? Will it, is it a perfect square? It's not on that right side of our list. If I start checking the numbers below it, nine won't go into 10 evenly, four won't go into 10 evenly, so 10 can't break down. So it's just stuff like that. Throw your plus minus sign, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So just to make sure we're on the page, what if it had been a square root of three on the bottom? What would I have multiplied by? Square root of three. Okay, it's always the square root. If you're trying to get rid of a square root, multiply it by that same square root. So if it had been a uh, eight on the bottom, square root of eight on the bottom, you'd multiply it by a square root of eight. Okay. Now, one more before we get to solve. That's the fun stuff. Let me get a new page for this one because it's a little different looking. Three over. 7 plus the square root of 2. Now we won't see a problem that has something like in this very often, but we might every now and then, so we got to look at it. So what's different between this one and the last one is it's a binomial on the bottom. we got one term, two terms. So when you got a binomial, and we're going to see it today with square roots, and we're going to see it tomorrow when we learn about imaginary numbers, when you've got a binomial on the bottom and you need to cancel out the, either the square root or the imaginary number, you multiply it by its conjugate. And all the conjugate means is you keep the terms the same, 
but you change the sign between them. So I got to multiply the top and the bottom by 7 minus the square root of 2. There's this one guy that I, I use his videos sometimes to help me teach, and he's, a, he's crazy and he's weird, so I can't do it very often because he gets on my nerves. But it, his math is really good. Anyway, he calls this the evil cousin conjugate because it's almost just like it, but they changed the sign. So I've always remembered the evil cousin conjugate. All right, so what that's going to look like on the top, we've got a monomial with a 3 and then a binomial over here. So we're just going to distribute that 3. So 3 times 7 will get me a 21. And then minus, when you multiply a constant and a radical, it just stays like you just stick it in front, like that. Okay? But now on the bottom, it's a little bit more involved because we've got a binomial times a binomial. So you can say it a couple of ways, and this is what, what I've been talking to you about. I can distribute the 7 to both of those and distribute the square 2 to both of those. I can use the FOIL, an acronym, if I want to. Um, let me get a different color for this here. So I'm going to have my 7 times 7. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have my 7 times the negative square root of 2. So it'll be minus 7 square roots of 2. Okay, so I'm done with the 7. Now I'm here. So I got square root of 2 times 7, so that's a positive 7 square root of 2. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, a negative square root of 4. Okay, so I told you that our whole purpose in doing this is that you can't leave a radical on bottom. I just went from a problem that had one radical on bottom, 1, 2, 3, to 3 radicals on bottom. I told you you can't have any on bottom. I just tripled the number I got down there. Does anybody see any magic that's fixing to happen? Uh, combine like, uh, okay, right well, here, well, I got a negative 7 square root of 2 and a positive 7 square root of 2. So they he gone. And then don't I know what the square root of 4 is? So that's the same as saying 49 minus 2, right? So 21 minus 3 square root of 2 over 49 minus 2. Hey, I don't have any radicals anymore. Okay, now, sometimes we'll be able, if you can see my mouse is going there, just on those big numbers, the coefficients, sometimes just like if they had been all evens, I could reduce them. But 21, 3, and 47, I can't reduce that. So... Am I good? No, you gotta put the positive or negative. Where where do you think I would put a positive or negative in this case? Because that's where I was heading next. Outside out front. Of the, yeah. Like in between. Like not either. Not up or down. Flip the nominator. Just in front of the whole fraction is what they're saying. So something like that. That's what I think. I was looking, this answer key didn't even put one at all. I'll have to check on that. That's a, a good point. All right. So, like I said, we won't see that very often, but that is the most complicated of them just because we always forget about the conjugate, the evil cousin conjugate. Let's look at how this all goes together now because we need to make some sense out of it. So let's say I gave you 3x squared plus 5 is equal to 41, and I told you to solve. So up until today, we would have had to set this up for factoring. So y'all would have told me that I need to set it, make it equal to 0, right? So I would have subtracted the 41. 5 minus 41, so I'd have 3x squared minus 36 equals 0. Don't write this down. I'm just showing you what we would have done before. 3x squared minus 36 is equal to 0. Okay? So then I would have noticed that I could take a 3 out. Okay? But then I get to this spot right here, x squared minus 12, and I can't do anything with that. So we wouldn't have been able to have factored that. 
So that's why we need what we're looking at today. So what we're gonna do today, solving, you've taken square roots. We're just gonna attack this like we would a middle school equation. When we were in middle school, we tried to isolate the variable, which may get the X all by itself. So what would my step here be to get the X all by itself? Subtract the five. So we're looking at 3x squared is equal to 36. So we're still seeing the same numbers we saw over there, right? Now, divide, divide by 3. Good, so nothing new. So we got x squared is 12. And by the way, this is working this way because what was missing from the equation? The x on the b. The b, very good. There was no b, right? Right? Okay, so because there was no x to the first power and that's where the b is. So that's that's your clue on why we're able to do this. All right, so my last step now is I need to undo the squared by square rooting. And this is why we did those warm-up problems. So I'm going to say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. Just undid that squared. Okay, so look on the right side of that list we made. It goes from 9 to 16. It skipped 12, didn't it? So I gotta work my way backwards and see if one of those will go evenly into 12. So will nine go evenly into 12? No. no. Will four go evenly into 12? Yes. Yes, so this is gonna say X is equal to plus or minus the square root of four times three. And now if it's a perfect square, I'm gonna bring it out to play wiffle ball. If it's not, it's gotta stay in the house and do chores. So four is a perfect square. What is the square root of four? Two, so I've got plus or minus two, and then three stays in the house. That's it. Now, that would be hard to find on a graph, because square root of three is like one point something and it keeps going forever. So, but keep in mind that is what you're finding, where that parabola would cross the x-axis, and those are two times, because it would do it at positive two square root of three, and it would do it at negative two square root of three. That's what the plus minus means for you there. And I remember we spent a lot of time with square roots last year in geometry. Yep. Ms. Stewart's always trying to help me out. I like it. I don't like it. Oh, come on. He's like, no, no. I was dozed out for those three weeks. <laughs> Did you ever move on to floor tiles? I did the floor and all of the bricks in the wall. <laughs> My word, that's funny stuff. <coughs> okay, so still solving here. Now, it is possible to make this problem be pretty complicated, but we're going to try to keep things simple. We're just solving using square roots. What we can do to make it pretty complicated is this whole <coughs> Quantity is being squared, so that means you would, don't write this down, that means you would take that quantity twice. So we could come over here and multiply these two together and then distribute a one-fifth to it and then move that seven over and then try, try to start solving from there. That would be way more work than you need to do. Okay, the quicker thing this is set up for is just to start trying to isolate the variable again like you did in middle school. So what I would say to you, using some demo coach right rules, is try to get rid words. Is try to get rid of the extra jump. So I'm looking at this one fifth as extra jump. Let's get rid of that. So that means one fifth times all of that. So I could divide everything by one fifth. So here, those would cancel out. You probably don't think you know what seven divided by one fifth is, but you do. Very good. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I've got the quantity of x plus 3 squared is equal to 35. Okay, now this is starting to look a little more simple, isn't it? We got rid of that extra jump. I wonder now if I could get rid of a squared. We've just been learning how to get rid of a squared. You undo a squared by square rooting. 
So I'm going to square root both sides. So give me x plus 3 is equal to positive or negative square root of 35. Okay, 35. Let's see, my list goes from 25 to 36, doesn't it? So it skipped over 35. So start working backwards. Caitlin Baker, please come to the high school office. Caitlin Baker to the high school office. Will 25 go evenly into 35? No. Will 16? No. 9? No. 4? No. So 35 is not going to break down. So that's really good news for you. That's less work. That whole thing has to stay in the house and do chores. There's no wiffle ball game outside. But I don't have the X all by itself yet. What? Still has a plus 3 over here. What do I do to get rid of that plus 3? Subtract. Subtract the 3 from both sides. So all you've got to know now is how to write this answer because you probably never have written one like it before. It's going to be X equals, and that negative 3 that I just moved over is going to go in front mm -hmm. like that. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Say that again. In front of the plus Yes, yes. So what that would mean on your graph is you'd have to do negative 3 plus the square root of 35 and find where that is, then negative 3 minus the square root of 35 and find where that is. So that is still two answers. It should be 5 point something. Okay. I'm going to backtrack now and show, whoops, I said backtrack, push the back button. Backtrack now and make sure we can do something, a super easy one. And then we'll do one more after that and see what happens. So the directions say solve. There's just one step involved in this one. This one is as easy as it can be. The X is all by itself except for that squared button. So how do you undo a square? Square root. Square root. So X is going to be whatever the positive negative square root of 169 is. I don't think I went that far on my list, but that one would make the list. Anybody know what, the time, what number times itself equals 169? 13. 13. Very good. <laughs> I was thinking of what it would actually be. That's it. That's your answer. The X was already, there was nothing else going on to undo that time. Do y'all know how to do square roots on those calculators? Mm -hmm. Okay. If not, I can show you. So It's just the second and then the X squared. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Let me let you, I'll, I'll give one that's got one more step and let you try it and see how we do. This one says X squared equals 50. Now, what's going to happen in this one, 50 is not on the list. So you're going to have to break 50 down. So give that a whirl, see if you can get that knocked out. Now, I'm always like every math teacher. I, I told y'all I'm not like most math teachers, and I'm not. But one thing that I do agree with them on is that showing your work is always best. That way, when you're asking, what did I do wrong? Well, you didn't even write anything down. How am I supposed to know what you did wrong? So this gives me a, a chance to see where, where you're confused at. So I could do this problem, and some of y'all could too, without showing those two steps. But I'm showing them now because we're still in the beginning stages. So you needed to realize 40, uh, 50, and I told you 50 was not a perfect square. Your perfect square list went from 49 to 64, skipped over 50. 
So I started working my way backwards on the right side to find the biggest one that would go evenly into 50, and this is where I landed. Does everybody agree with that? So now the perfect square gets to come out. So what times itself equals 25? What times itself is 25? Five. So a five comes out. The two stays in. That's your final answer. How'd you do? Did you get it? Good. Good, good, good. All right. The um, tomorrow stuff is still this, but it's going to also introduce us to imaginary numbers. Everything we saw today underneath the radical was a positive number. You cannot be a real number and have a negative underneath the radical because something times itself can never equal a negative, right? So that's where imaginary numbers, and they just have the symbol of lowercase i, comes into play. So tomorrow we're going to put this with imaginary numbers, and we will almost be ready to start flying after that. Yep, I know. Like 17 billion. Thank you.